Hey folks! Well, it's our 10th episode here. I would like to thank all our loyal viewers. All six of you. Anyway, in honor of this milestone, we've added something new to the program. A new camera! So... So, now I can step away from the built-in camera on my computer. It has a bit of freedom. However, I'll try not to abuse it. It does allow me to move to a new location for my show. And what do we have on this special show? Well, perhaps this will give you a hint. <laughs> That's right! It's our first Thanksgiving special. So tie on your bibs for an extra big helping of Four Color Kitty. an issue of the Justice Society of America. Justice Society of America number 54 to be exact. This was a crossover event with the Justice League of America. Hey, when that special day in November rolls around, even superheroes gather around the dinner table. Ever since Justice League of America number 21, there has been a long history of the JSA and the JLA teaming up. Fortunately, it isn't always to save the world. In this issue of JSA, we discovered the two teams annually get together for Thanksgiving dinner. As you might have noticed, the cover to this issue is actually a spoof of the famous Norman Rockwell painting, Freedom from Want. A friend of mine noticed Power Girl there with the turkey and said that there's a breast joke in there somewhere. Moving on. <laughs> So, the two teams gather at the JSA's headquarters, known as the Brownstone, where they've been meeting since World War II. Mr. Terrific is trying to assure Batman that things will be just fine for one night, and there's no reason to believe that supervillains are suddenly going to start popping out of the woodwork just because the two teams are getting together. Of course, Batman remains a wet blanket. While Bruce Wayne may be the life of the party, Batman could turn Mardi Gras into a somber event. On the next couple of pages, we get to see a nice spread of some of the members of the two teams. We then see Wonder Woman discussing with some of the other heroes about how Native Americans kind of got a raw deal after the colonies started showing up. Champion Scrapper and old-fashioned all-American Wildcat takes issue, in his own way. See, he knew Diana's mother back in the early days of the JSA, and lets her daughter know that she would be just shocked at her behavior. Yep, that wildcat. Such a winning way with words. Power Girl rebuts his argument effectively by grabbing the boxing champion by the scruff of the neck and throwing him out a window. Ah, yes. Debate with the Marcus of Queensberry rules. Fortunately, he is caught by Superman, who is known for rescuing cats. The Man of Steel, who was arriving with Captain Marvel, lets Wildcat down on one of the balconies of the Brownstone. Once again... We have a meeting of the two most clean-cut and upstanding superheroes. This time, Captain Marvel takes the nicest award for bringing a minced meat pie baked by his sister Mary Marvel. Back at the party, Jay Garrick, the original Flash, is trying to get the young speedster known as Impulse to slow down and relax. Things are looking up for Impulse as he meets the JSA's youngest member, Jakeem Thunder. The two hit it off well. We then turn to Dr. Midnight, who is on monitor duty. He is visited by Black Canary, who he had gone out with on a couple dates, but they didn't really hit it off. At this awkward moment, Batman decides to make sure that there are no breakouts at local prisons, no alien invasions, no sign of intrusion from the antimatter universe. Nope, all is quiet. 
We then move to the kitchen. You know, I can't remember how many times I've seen a superhero in battle starting in a kitchen. In the kitchen is the latest Our Man, making his father's recipe for mashed potatoes in front of the wives of the original Flash, as well as the original Green Lantern. In comes the original Liberty Bell, with her daughter, the then Jessie Quick. When Liberty Bell sees Our Man doing some cooking, she immediately swings into matchmaking mode. Under cover of this distraction, Hawkman, with the atom on his shoulder, sneaks a drumstick. However, the ill-gotten snack is pinned to the wall by Oliver Queen, the Green Arrow. The two then greet each other as they have in the past, loudly. Green Arrow also wants to know why everybody is in costume here at Thanksgiving. He has a point. But then again, maybe not everybody there knows everybody else's secret identity. Batman comes in and asks if Our Man, who can have flash-forward visions of an hour into the future, has seen anything. Unfortunately, Our Man can't control his future sight. It is then that dinner is served. After the star-spangled kid complains about being at the kitty table, and everyone sits down, Jay Garrick offers a toast. And Mr. Terrific once again tells Batman to relax. If that isn't a cue, I don't know my comics. And I know my comics. Two D-Gray villains, Kulak the Sorcerer and the Warlock of Wise, teleport in right on top of the table, scattering the feast everywhere. They start boasting about their great plan to destroy the Justice League, but then start to notice there are quite a few more heroes than they were expecting and they aren't happy about being covered in the food they're about to eat. Not happy at all. We don't get to see the actual battle. In fact, I'm not sure that it really is a battle so much as a painful object lesson to these two schmucks why you don't go interrupting Thanksgiving dinner when the JSA has guests. In fact, 33 minutes later, 20 large meat lovers pizzas and one vegetarian pizza are delivered to the address of 700 Broadway. Total cost is $210. It appears Batman hands them $300 and tells them to keep the change. He declines the free breadsticks. The two delivery men, who were probably grumbling about having to work on a holiday before, now have the best story to tell their friends. Dude, we just delivered pizzas to Batman, and he tips well. As Mr. Terrific and Batman take the substitute feast back to their friends and family, Mr. Terrific concedes Batman's victory. He tells the Dark Knight to go ahead and say it. As the comic closes, the world's greatest detective gets the last line with, I told you so. Thus ends this special edition of Four Color Kitty. I hope you and yours have a very happy Thanksgiving. And remember, send in those questions and topic suggestions. I'm Patrick Black for Four Color Kitty, and I'll be seeing you in the funny pages.